The nation's chief taking on international giants who have hampered the Bahamas' access to critical funding, funding needed in achieving the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Good Tuesday evening, Bahamas. I'm Altavis Munnings. I'm Kishal Adderley. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Topping the news, it was a candid address by the Prime Minister today as he officially opened the United Nations Symposium for Small Island Developing States. The three-day conclave is focusing on meeting those development goals amidst some challenges. Clint Watson leads us off tonight from the conference. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie steadfast in his position that the Bahamas is placed at a disadvantage when it comes to qualifying for international funding, critical for the implementation of the United Nations Sustainable Goals for 2030. Those goals speak to vital areas like climate change, energy, while being people-focused, dealing with areas of youth and crime. The Prime Minister says a symposium should address how small island developing states can achieve these goals given their unique challenges. Using our country and its archipelagic makeup, he outlined how it is an expensive undertaking to duplicate infrastructure on various islands. There is a compelling urgency for infrastructural development as a catalyst to economic development. And therein lies the great challenge to our country. That when you apply the per capita income test to the Bahamas, you are being unfair to the Bahamas insofar as our geophysical structure is concerned and the differing stages of development of our country. The Prime Minister stressed that despite our challenges and membership in international organizations, we're still not able to benefit from crucial funding. Mr. Christie says his government has made a determination to stop paying the insurance and reinvest the money into its own resources. It makes no sense, therefore, to a country like the Bahamas that is required to spend an enormous amount of money and for all sorts of variations in determination, wind speed, flooding, we are not qualified even though the impact on people and infrastructure is devastating. So the country therefore has to find the means to pay its way. And so colleagues therefore have, will have to determine whether or not it makes sense to even be a part of the insurance, and we should self-insure. Mr. Grissy says, like other SIDs, the Bahamas is forced with finding solutions to its high unemployment among youth. We're necessarily, when we sit in meetings and we discuss sustainable goals and the eradication of poverty, and you look at the challenges of governance, you ask yourself, how is it going to happen? Because on one hand, you're being urged to make the commitments to achieve those things. And on the other hand, there are administrative obstacles and tests. And with the Bahamas having challenges in securing international funding, Prime Minister Christie, in a news conference following his comments, did speak to the issue of how the Bahamas expects to derive funds, particularly in implementing the sustainable goals. We can, in fact, um, extract as much as we possibly can for on behalf of the Bahamian people. Um, whilst we continue to do that, um, to impress upon our friends, like the United States of America, that has a strong relationship with the Bahamas and the region, um, and they have responded to us positively when it comes to disaster preparedness and mitigation and energy reform, they have waived that standard that they too had adhered to with respect to per capita um, testing. And so we're making progress, we feel, Right? Um, but I think the most important point for us is to use the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals um, to, to most certainly drive the process that we are on with our national plan. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News.